All right, so I'm really bad about recording things as they happen. So I've actually done a lot of stuff with this instrument since the last update. So now comes the part where we pretend that I'm doing things as they happen. Please enjoy. My fellow geeks and nerds, my name is Davis, otherwise known as a ball of fluff, and welcome back to Fluffball the Wizard. So I've been occasionally dropping updates about this instrument that I'm designing. To sum up, so far I've established that the idea I want is basically a keyboard, similar to the Rolly Seaboard with its five dimensions of touch that I cover in my last video. So all of that with breath control, similar to the Iwi, which I also cover in my last video. So right now I'm mainly focusing on the breath control aspect, and I'm designing a headset that I can just wear. I want it to look as cool as possible. Like, it's probably gonna look ridiculous no matter what, but I'm gonna at least try to make it look kind of cool. So I want, like, an RGB LED bar that can kind of show the pressure of the breath that I'm applying, as well as some other controls. And ideally, I want the whole thing to be wireless. Now, the clip that I played before my intro about me being bad about recording things was actually recorded several months ago, back when I hadn't changed my channel or anything. And the following clips were also recorded in that time period, so apologies if it's complete crap, because I had no idea what I was doing yet. But this is the progress that I've made on the instrument so far. Alright, so if you remember from last time, I was using this old Iwi as a breath controller. I was just ignoring the bottom half of it and just using the breath controller. But this thing is an absolute monstrosity for only using the breath controller. So I think it's time to downsize. So this took for ever to find because this is just such a rare thing that nobody seems to do and I'm like okay well I should probably find out what I'm dealing with here and so I'm like hey Google what's the average amount of pressure that a human can blow and it's like all right one to two psi eventually I stumbled upon the MPX 5010 which is rated for 10 kilopascals or approximately 1.4 psi so that's perfect so I ordered that and now behold the only clip I actually recorded when it was happening which was at like 3 a.m. and I originally just sent to my friend's group chat on Instagram. And they're like, Davis, you're such a nerd. And I'm like, I know, that's not news, but you know what is news? This pressure sensor that I got, check it out. All right, so here's the sensor. You can see the little engraving, MPX 5010 DP. And there's two valves. This one is for positive pressure. This one is for vacuum pressure. So that means this thing should be bi-directional. I'm not sure to what degree, but we're about to find out because I rigged it up to this little test with an Arduino Uno. It's a simple potentiometer style layout. We got VCC, ground, and data. And I have a little LED there that'll be linked to the output as well as I will be outputting to the serial graph thing, whatever you call that. Serial plotter, that's it. And I have this going at 115, 200 baud, so that's pretty quick. So without further ado, let's see if this thing actually works. I'm blowing. And we have a graph. Looks pretty responsive, too. That's awesome. And then we have reverse pressure. Okay, so that just keeps it positive, that's interesting. And then if I suck on the positive pressure one, there's like a little bit of play there. All right, so that'll be interesting to play with. Now let's get some tubing. All right, so here's our little tubing that we're gonna be using, it's quarter inch. So let's go ahead and cut this tube into a few pieces here. And let's assemble this on the T-splitter. Alright, and here we have our main setup. We have input, exhaust, detector. And let's see if it still works. So right now, that's a lot of escape because this is completely open. But if I were to cover it with cloth, do something like that, not only is that a lot more comfortable resistance, but it's also almost silent. <laughs> All right, I think that's gonna work really well. And obviously you can see a lot of condensation buildup on the inside of this tube 
but not right there. And in reality, this tube is going to be a lot shorter because this is just going to be directly to the mouthpiece, which is going to stop about there. So theoretically, all of the condensation should go out there because although this is detecting pressure, the actual airflow is going in this direction. So that should push all the moisture out. I think I'm physicsing that correctly. So now the issue is fitting all of this into a tiny headset that can go on my mouth. And I have actually started some designs for that. So this is my basic idea that I just kind of jotted down at like three in the morning. It's just gonna be like a bar, probably won't be this long. We're gonna have the Arduino on one side with like the USB sticking out on one of these faces. Then we have the mouthpiece that will be protruding out in that direction. We have the pressure sensor that'll be somewhere around here. Battery over here. The exhaust tube will be going around that to this side where we'll have the condensation collector and it'll be free to evaporate there. I might put a power switch there as well. Maybe there if it'll fit. And this is the design that I've started. So I got rid of the little notch thing on top that I had in my sketch because that's just kind of unnecessary. But yeah, so the Arduino will go like there with the USB sticking out. Condensation collector here. Mouthpiece will be extruding out here. And this whole design is ridiculously parametric, which is awesome. So if I go and show these sketches here, say I discover my head is a little bit wider and it will update accordingly. And that will update accordingly. And now it looks ridiculous, but it works and everything updates. We got options here. I love when everything just works. Also something that I forgot to mention is for this project, like for testing purposes, I'm just using the Arduino Uno because it's what I have lying around. Ultimately, I was planning to use the Arduino Nano, which is a lot smaller, can easily fit in that headset about right here. But something that I didn't mention is Arduino posted a while ago that later this year they are releasing some new models of Arduino Nano. Because this thing, I th think was discontinued because usually you can really only get like clones of it like I still like it because I can find reliable clones for like three bucks on eBay but the point is Arduino is releasing some official boards that have new and improved capabilities like a faster processor and they have different versions and one of those versions in particular caught my eye and that is the VLE Sense because this Arduino is going to be the same tiny form factor as this thing. In fact, even smaller because they got rid of all the chips on the bottom, everything is gonna be on the top. But this board has, among other things, integrated 9-axis gyro and Bluetooth low latency. That's right, this thing is going to be completely wireless, if all goes well. So if we get that, set up the wireless, we should be able to have this thing communicate like a wireless MIDI controller. So I should be able to just wear the headset and nothing else and have breath control in my projects. It'll have a rechargeable battery, which hopefully if I can do it right, will be charged with the same USB port that programs the Arduino Nano. And yeah, holy crap, I'm so excited for this. Like just to clarify, I was using this beast of a thing, but only this part of it. And now we have this. This is tiny. Oh my gosh, I love it. Progress is being made, people. All right, so I've made some tweaks to the design. I actually decided to add back in the little notch up here because I needed it for some space for some components inside. But this is what we're looking like right now. It's a little bit bulkier, but I think it'll do okay. So we've got our front piece here, and we got our back piece that'll slide in there. I still need to make some kind of locking mechanism for that. We've got a USB port will be on this side, and we have ventilation on this side with some very cool looking vents. And then if I just make the entire thing transparent, we can see some of the internals that I've started. So we've got our Arduino here, which will have its USB port sticking out there. We've got a couple of PWM drivers here for all of the LEDs that will go along the front edge. And we've got, of course, our pressure sensor there, which will have its tube running around underneath and to the mouthpiece that'll stick out there. Pins, of course, running to Arduino along with the PWM drivers. And then eventually we're gonna have a battery here as well as um, the exhaust tube that will go to the ventilation. And later on I found a generic model of a head on GrabCAD that I can use as a mannequin for the headset. I also made some improvements adding in LEDs, as well as the mouthpiece design, which I teased in the video of me fixing my 3D printer. So I've actually already got a version of a couple of the parts here. You can see the back of the headset in PLA and the mouthpiece in semi-flex. So these are coming right along. Alright, lots happened. I want to try to sum up. Uh... uh... Ewey, I took the mouthpiece off.
Turns out it fits perfectly on this tube. So now I have a mouthpiece. Um, LEDs, they're a thing. Uh, X key is connected to my iPad along with the USB thing and charging. iPad's connected to my speakers and it's running a synthesizer and music. Baby. So after that epiphany, I took a little more time to get set up, changed the LED color to blue, and proceeded to do a few more experiments with the current setup. Right now I just have breath control directly controlling volume, and I'm using the pitch bend buttons on the X key itself to control pitch bend. But you can already see the extreme expressive capabilities that this could have. So the way I did the LEDs is I actually programmed a series of animations that could be assigned to any value. This actually started as a processing sketch, because I was traveling at the time and didn't have my Arduino on me. But I made templates for all the parameters that I planned to implement in the headset. I made a fading bar animation that was assigned to breath, and another overlapping bar assigned to roll from the gyro. Then the pitch from the gyro currently fades all colors from one to another and the byte parameter would trigger some random flashing of LEDs. This algorithm took a lot of tweaking to get just right. Here's an early version of it transferred onto the temporary Arduino setup I was using, and I also played with a combination of the breath and byte controls when I eventually got an actual prototype of the front part printed out. And I spent many hours putting in the RGB LEDs and wiring them up. Here I just have the left and right sides as hardwired mirror images of each other to simplify things a little bit, but a couple days later, I realized something. Well, despite this massive amount of wiring, and the fact that everything works, I am an absolute moron. Now you might think, Davis, that's a lot of wires right there and everything looks very fancy and like, if it works, it works. But let me tell you why I'm an absolute moron. Because, it turns out, I actually don't need any of this. I don't need these LEDs. I don't need these wires. I do not need these two chips. I don't need to be using up the I2C bus. And I don't need this giant breadboard to try to accommodate this insane amount of stuff. And most importantly, I don't need to try to fit all of this inside here or try to design a PCB that does so. And let me tell you why. The answer is quite simple, really. I completely forgot about the existence of LED strips. That's right, all of this is now that. This entire circuit does the exact same function. It's the exact same thing. I spent literal hours trying to get this thing to work and succeeded and yet failed because the but hey, good news is, this is a thing! So this should make things significantly easier. Okay, a little update for you. Got those sensors in place, updated a bunch of stuff in the code, and yeah, here we go. So obviously the breath still works, I've got some potentiometers in there temporarily for the other controls, such as the roll dimension, which activates the overlapping bar, and I can also do the pitch dimension, which will change all of the colors, and that applies to every color. So for each animation, there's like an A and B, and the pitch just kind of fades between them. And there's also a potential geometer for the byte dimension that has the flashing LEDs, and I think this algorithm is about as good as I'm going to get it. This looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I just can't get over how stupid this is. It's like, what previously took 
Let's see. Um, ten percent two sides twenty plus another virtual next to the ground drivers. thirty times three components RGB. That makes ninety plus a ground wire. Let's see. Ground wire LED is an N. SDN for the ground drivers times two plus ground for the ground drivers times two. Wait, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. The ground drivers nine, nine, nine. But if you want to be technical about it, there's actually joint wires here as well. So let's see. Let's see. Three times twenty, sixty. Times sixty plus nine. A hundred and fifty-nine. So what previously took a hundred and fifty-nine wires for the lights alone can now be done with three. It takes three wires to power an LED strip. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm such a moron. <laughs> Dozens of hours, hundreds of wires, gone to waste. All this is useless. This is ridiculous. Ugh, crap. Don't need any of those, any of these. So I can take this off, I don't need that. Let's see, this entire pin header strip can come off. Oh, it's not one strip. I forgot I used multiple because there's so many wires. I didn't have one that was big enough. All of this. Don't need either of these. These wires can go. All this. Useless. Apologies in advance. I don't know what the heck I filmed this on or why the quality is so bad, but this is a very exciting clip that I couldn't leave out. I actually printed a mount for the LED strip. So here's a little peek at what it might look like while it's inside the headset. You can see breath control still works, and I hooked up an actual gyro so that you can see tilt and pitch control doing their animations. So that is very promising. You can see why I'm so excited about this project and have been excitedly pushing it in my previous videos. Now, my original plan with this, like the idea when it formed in my head was to just have one instrument with all of these insane expressive capabilities. But as I'm working on it, I'm definitely realizing that it'd be better to split it up into components. So as I mentioned, I want to make a keyboard element that is similar to the Rolly Seaboard, except this one it would be more of a touchscreen with etched acrylic or glass. Might be modular, kind of like the Rolly Blocks system. There, there's a lot of brainstorming yet to do with that aspect. I'm also going to want a controller module so that that will include things like patch changes and assignable knobs and faders, loop track controls, there's still a lot of brainstorming to do with that as well. Then of course we have the breath control headset which I'm focusing on right now and I want to get that finished first because it is the most unique element and has probably the most expressive capability of this whole thing. So once I finish that, I can actually apply that to existing keyboards, like the X key like I've been doing, or like the C board if I want some extra expression. And believe it or not, I've actually made even more progress with this than I showed here, but that is for another video. Speaking of which, I've got some news that you might want to hear. So I've never really had an upload schedule at all, it's just kind of like, will he upload twice a week? Will he upload once a year? But now that I'm getting a little more experienced with these things, I can start to plan these things. So tentatively, I'm going to try to upload every other Friday. Now I realize that's still not very often, but it's a big step for me, especially considering I'm still under a thousand subscribers, which you can help fix by subscribing and sharing to your friends. And I still have work and school, but that's the plan. Hopefully I can be faithful to that. If you like this video, there is a button for that. Also, please share this video with your friends. If you want to show me something of yours or you just want occasional posts and updates, you can follow me on Twitter at FluffTheWiz, so go do that. If you enjoy all my adventures like this, then you can help me out by subscribing to this here channel. And if you're feeling generous, you can click the link in the description to get to my Patreon page. Then you sign up for whatever you can afford, every dollar counts, and you will get some super cool benefits and those will expand as more of you join. Thank you all for watching and until next time, make things, sing songs, virtually hug people, and I will see you all in my next adventure. Oh my freaking god. Oh my freaking god. Ugh. Oh, I broke my breadboard. Ugh. Crap. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I just got up. I found something that made me literally run to my computer because it's so exciting.